this story was everywhere. What, I mean, could you avoid this story over the past two, three days? The anticipation of the story, then the finally dropping of the story, then the next iteration of the story. He got ahead of the story. For those who have been living under a rock for the past 72 hours, he was accused of rape, sexual assault, and professional misconduct in the sexual lane uh, by several women, at least four, none of whom is given their name. They've used pseudonyms to speak out to UK publications, uh, Channel 4 Dispatches, uh, The Times of London, and forgive me, there was another uh, that's not coming to mind right now. This, the Sunday Times, there we go. And um, it goes back, it dates mo back mostly to 2013 and before. And Russell Brand tried to get ahead of it no, because they went to him for comment eight days before they aired the piece, saying, Here's, here are all the accusations. They've been working on it for years, according to the reporters. And he tried to get ahead of it with the following denial. We'll play a little bit of what he said. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before. Okay. The first woman to come forward that is cited in the piece is Alice. These are pseudonyms. Alice says she was 16. She's now in her 30s. So it was some 14 years ago, I guess. She said she was 16, he was 30, and then 31 while they had a three-month affair. She was with him over the course of the birthday. 16 and 30 or 31. Um, Alice says he found her on the street in Leicester Square over there in the UK, that he stopped her on the street, grabbed her shopping bags, pulled out a red dress she had just purchased and said, you're wearing this on our first date. That he knew she was 16, that he dated her. He asked if she was a virgin. She said yes, that he became sexually aroused by it, that he did take her virginity, that he bathed her, that he kept referring to her as the child, that he would send, I think he was working for the BBC at the time, BBC too, he would send corporate cars to go pick her up at her high school uh, and bring her to him where, where they had sex repeatedly. This young woman's mother allegedly objected to the affair, but nonetheless dropped Alice off at Russell Brand's apartment over and over. Mom, that's a fail, fail. And then you get an F on your motherhood. Um, but it doesn't excuse the decision-making going on between the pair themselves. 16 is legally okay in the UK for consensual sex. That's the age of consent. And she has got some very disturbing stories. Okay, Alice um, claims, for example, uh, that there was a sexual assault that was not consensual. Here, is this uh, the actual Alice or is this the, the actor playing Alice, guys, in this soundbite that we're gonna air? Okay, because what they did in some of the cases was hire actresses to repeat the exact testimonials of the actual accusers. I'm just not sure, can't, can't remember whether this is actual Alice or the actor playing Alice. Either way, they're Alice's words. Here's her allegation, SOT 25. I was sat up in the bed up against the headboard and he um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe, it was just choking me, and I couldn't breathe. I was pushing him away, pushing him away, and he wasn't, he wasn't backing off at all. And so I ended up having to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. And then he like, finally, then he like, moved, fell backwards, and I was crying, and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. Okay, we believe that's the actual Alice uh, with her voice disguised now, just as an addendum. Uh, according to the reporting, she uh, claims that in this incident, she lay on the side of the bed after the attack, alleging he climbed on top of her, held open her mouth and drooled into it. 
I was gagging and trying to fight him off me, but he's lying on top of me, so I can't. My limbs are trapped underneath him, and I just thought, why are you doing this? It can't even be any sexual gratification in this. And then he held my mouth shut and made me swallow it, so I was just gagging and crying. Can I just tell you guys, I realize that the knee-jerk instinct now by so many is Russell Brand is wrongly accused. These women are all liars. I'm sorry, this is extremely detailed. And in the case of the other woman, there's an actual set of medical records after she went to a rape crisis center the day of the alleged encounter, plus apologetic begging for forgiveness text from Russell Brand. Could you please for a second stay open-minded to the possibility that the women are telling the truth? We don't need to so overcorrect from the Me Too movement that every woman gets completely disregarded and called a liar when she finds the guts to come forward and make an allegation. They may be telling the truth. It's worth investigating. We don't need to knee jerk condemn him and we don't need to knee jerk condemn them. I'm just pissed because what I've seen is like a rash of guys coming out to be like, it's bullshit. You don't know whether it's bullshit or not. Did you read the report of this woman? Did you read the rape, the alleged rape details? Did you read the text message that she has from Russell Brand begging for forgiveness? There's at least enough for us to want more facts. That's it. I'm sorry. That's my take on it. You guys are younger and and probably more conservative than I am. Maybe you see it more differently than I do. Welcoming other points of view. Will, I'll start with you. Well, I think you were exactly right there when you said, look for the facts. And I think you have Russell Brand coming out and saying this didn't happen. You have all these women with, like you said, these very detailed testimonies. And I would like to see something actually happen that proves whether or not he is innocent or guilty. I find it very difficult, especially I think we've all been rubbed a little raw by the Me Too movement and all this kind of stuff, Aziz and Zari, people like that. And we're all like, well, is this really true or not? And also Russell Brand was someone who was saying things that didn't really align with what the mainstream culture wants. So we're all kind of just, what are we supposed to do here? Do we believe it or not? And so I think what really we should be doing, most of us, and again, this is a very private matter with Russell Brand. Yes, he's a public figure, but you know, I hope that he can figure it out legally and make sure that if he's guilty, he's held accountable. And if he's innocent, he's, he's not. Um, but I think that we as consumers of media and responsible people need to say, okay, let's wait and let's make a rational decision when we can actually have something that gets proven to make sure that we are deciding with the facts actually given to us. I would like to hear his specific denials. I really would, because so far he gave the broad brush. He was provided with all the details. He, uh, um, he doesn't have the names, I guess. I don't think anybody has the names other than the reporters, but he would know whether or not he had sex for three months with a 16-year-old girl. Um, so I would love to hear a more point-by-point point denial. I don't think we're gonna get that until criminal charges have been ruled out, which I think they haven't been. I'm not sure that there was a report that the police were looking into this. Savannah, what is your take on it? I always love to look at these things from a journalistic perspective, and I like to look at both sides. I like to hear from both parties, um, you know, like you're saying. And I think the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, uh, you know, trial was a good example of this. Everyone immediately jumped on Amber Heard's side, and then we, it was found out that, hey, although Johnny Depp as well was not an angel in that relationship, neither was Amber Heard. And we do have to remember that while Russell Brand might have used his celebrity status to take advantage of, again, there's no excuse for taking advantage of his 16-year-old girl. There are women as well that would take advantage of, uh, you know, that celebrity status. There are women who do chase celebrities and there are other women who as well will come out and lie about men, especially when they don't agree with their politics. So for me, I look at this as a timing issue as well. I think it's interesting that now that Russell Brand has become extremely popular uh, on, on a on an alternative media site that he's now speaking out about various issues um, such as COVID-19. He's being very invested in American politics and just pushing back against that narrative that, again, a lot of the mainstream media is consistently pushing us towards in regards to politics. Now this is happening. So the timing of it is interesting to me. However, I'm not also going to come out and say, oh, these women are lying. They're false. Because like you said, both sides of the story should be looked at. Um, unfortunately, because of the repercussions of the media, to movement, we don't immediately believe all women when they come forward with these rape we charges. We shouldn't now. believe so all I women. Think, we shouldn't. Yeah, we I, should not immediately. They, they, the, the women do not deserve any sort of a presumption in their favor, period. The Me Too movement proved that. But what we also don't need is to overcorrect the problems of the Me Too movement and go back to, okay, so now they're all liars. They, they don't even mm -hmm. get an open-minded hearing on their claims, especially when you have 
this many coming forward. It's bullshit that this has become a conservative liberal thing, that now conservatives knee-jerk defend any man accused and liberals knee-jerk believe any woman who makes the accusations. It's wrong. Keep an open mind and a judge on a case-by-case -case basis. Millions of Americans earn and use credit card rewards. A few big box retailers wanna take those rewards away. That's according to the Electronics Payments Coalition, a sponsor of today's episode. Rewards you may use on groceries and school supplies, cash back to save on gas and grow small businesses, and travel miles to make memories. The so-called Credit Card Competition Act would eliminate credit card rewards. No more travel miles and no more cash back. Visit handsoffmyrewards.com to learn more. And if you would like to help them, tell your legislator to stand up to the retail giants and to support consumers and small businesses. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.